Hello everyone. Today I thought I'll make a small video about um, how to use or how to get the IP addresses of your hosts using Ansible. Um, if you have ever tried to set up a cluster like a Kubernetes cluster or a distributed database, Ceph cluster, something like that, chances are you would have wanted to automate that because setting up a cluster is very tedious, right? You have to repeat the same step like X number of times where X is the number of nodes in your cluster, right? And and when you're trying to set up an Ansible cluster, one of the edge cases that we run into is, uh, well, we need to set up firewall rules, right? And each node in the cluster, like I have three nodes here, right? Like node two, node one, and node zero, they all have their own IP addresses. And what we want is for them to be able to communicate with one another. So in our firewall, we need to set explicit rules saying, hey, you know, accept all traffic from this IP address. And this video wants to tackle that, like how do you do that using Ansible? How do you get the IP address? So if in your Ansible inventory, all you have is node 02, uh, how do you get the IP address of node 02 and add it as a firewall rule in node 01? Right, like this doesn't have to be an IP address specific issue. I'm just using firewall rules as an example, but it's just a very generic Ansible uh, use case and you can extend it to whatever application you're trying to deploy. So enough rambling, let's get into the scripts themselves. Uh, here is my inventory file. I have a group called cluster and within this group, there are three nodes, node zero, node zero one, node zero two. Um, and the playbook that I'm going to run that's going to automate firewall addition is this playbook. And you don't have to worry about it. The GitHub repository for all of these things will be linked in the description. Oh wait, I wouldn't add it as a GitHub repo. I'll just paste the snippet in, in the description and you can copy it. That would be easier. However, let's walk through the playbook now, shall we? Now, it's not actually just one play. There are three plays here. Like this is the first one with three tasks. And sorry, there are just two. No, yeah, there are three plays. This is the second play. And this is the third and the final play. So let's go through them one by one. The first one just sets cluster variable. Um, so what it does is it declares two variables, cluster IPs. Whoops, that's my display driver crashing, I guess. Never mind. I hope this didn't screw up the recording. Yeah, so I declare an empty list called cluster IPs. Then to this list, I add the IP addresses of each node. The reason I'm doing it this way is because it's much easier to call cluster IPs in your playbook than this whole entire big enchilada of variables, right? So what I'm going to do is assign cluster IPs, cluster IP that itself, and then the default IP address that Ansible used to connect to the end host, right? now. These things tend to get a bit tangled depending on what cloud service provider you're using. So for example, I'm using DigitalOcean and DigitalOcean has the public IP address directly assigned to the droplet itself, droplet being their compute instance. But if you're using something like AWS, uh, what they're going to do is they're going to assign an ephemeral IP, a public ephemeral IP, and your VM itself will have a private IP to which all the traffic is being forwarded. So depending on what cloud hosting provider you're using, you may have to tweak this variable here instead of default IPv4 address, you would have to go for uh, IPv address for um, a specific interface, right? So the private network can talk to one another, like the private network within which all your compute instances are can talk to one another, right? So something to keep in mind. Uh, and of course, like I'm looping this with all the hosts, right? So group clusters is just, you know, like it's going to be a list of all the VM nodes, right? So this thing is going to be replaced by this list here, right? Like line two to four. And so it'll add the IP address of each of them, right? And 
The second play that we have is just a debug one. You don't even have to copy this, but I wrote it here uh, for the express purpose of a verbosity, right? So this is just going to print what's going to happen in the third and the final play where the UFW rules are being added, right? So uh, UFW is getting installed in all the three instances. Uh, we are adding a small rule for SSH, so I can SSH into those instances and show you what's happening. And then it's just cluster IPs allow, right? And that way, you know, everything works, hopefully. So let's run this playbook and see if everything, I've already run it, but doesn't matter. Let's run it again. Ansible playbook site.yaml. Um, this is going to take a while, but I don't think, I mean, if I'm not being lazy while editing, I would edit this part out. So you can see cluster IP is a list of IP addresses where IP addresses are strings themselves. These are just Python data types, nothing sophisticated happening here. Cluster names are just name of the hosts. Again, so in theory, we are on track. Now let's see the final result. Okay, UFW is being installed. UFW stands for Unified Firewall, I think. No, Uncomplicated Firewall, something like that. Uh, so it seems to be working fine like you can see that for node 1 this IP address is being allowed for node 0 this the same IP address is being allowed for node 2 so there are a total of 9 rules right so 3 cross 3 9 rules right so for each node 3 IP addresses are being allowed makes sense uh, then UFW is enabled and I think SSH rule was added somewhere here. Let's SSH into node01.runv.tech and UFW status. Yeah, there we go. Uh, three rules have been added where, you know, the node can talk to its brethren. And let's verify that with node 0, 2, your FW status. Yep, node 0, 2 works as well. Finally, node 0, 0. There you go. So this is how you deal with IP addresses. Uh, depending on your cloud infrastructure, things may vary a little. I would link in the description the the blog post that helped me out through through this whole debugging procedure and hopefully that will help you a bit more and I hope you found this video helpful right like this was like a month headache condensed into 10 minutes but maybe I'm just that slow when it comes to debugging all right then enough rambling I I wish you all a happy have a nice day